In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Superbase Auth with Flutterflow. Also, we're gonna talk about how to structure your user tables and how to properly link tables together. So like if you have a user who has posts, how are those connected together? Okay, so we're gonna start in Supabase and I've signed into my account and I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna call this poster because you can post, password, select the region where most of your users are gonna be and create a new project. Now, this will take a minute to create and that's because Supabase isn't just a database, but a whole back end. So when it's setting up this project, it's setting up multiple tables, authentication and API endpoints. Okay, beautiful. So let's go over on this left side to this table editor right here. So here's obviously where you create a new table, but I wanna look in here for a second to sort of understand the structure of what's going on here. In this drop down menu, you can see a bunch of schemas. And if you're not familiar with that term, you can think of them as folders. They're folders for your tables. They're how you organize your different tables in your projects, the tables that actually have the data in them. And this is helpful because you have different purposes or use cases for these different tables. So we have a bunch of different tables that are automatically set up by Supabase to handle authentication. Okay, so how are we gonna structure our tables? Well, we're gonna have a table for posts and we're gonna need a table for users. Well, actually we need two tables for users and that's because one is going to handle our authentication and the other one will create in this public schema that will have more public facing data. So the security rules will be more opened up. Now, why would you want that to be? Like, don't you want things secure? Well, yes, but if you think about it on an app like Twitter, for instance, you have certain user information that's more public, like someone's username and their profile picture. Those are attached to the users, but they're not private information. Whereas this other more secure users table inside the auth will store things like an encrypted password that should be super secure. And this is a common pattern where you'll have two user tables. Okay, so let's make our user table first. So we've got a new table. We're gonna call this users. We're gonna turn off row level security. These are just the security rules for who can access this table and when they access it, what can they do? Now, you'll wanna set these up properly before your app goes live, but we just wanna set this up quickly right now so we can turn this off. Now, when you scroll down here, this is where we set up the structure or the columns in our table. Now, if you're migrating from somewhere else, you can come over here and import that data from a spreadsheet or just paste the text in, but we're gonna set it up manually so we kind of understand how this is structured. So first we've just got the name of our column, like the header. Then we've got the type of data that's gonna be in here. Next, we've got a default value, and this'll be the value that is written when no data is entered. So normally you're gonna have a value here. So for instance, each row, like a user, will have data. So for instance, they would have a first name and a last name and an email that'll come in when they sign up. But often you'll have optional values. So for instance, maybe in your app, you don't have to provide a first name. That's where this default value comes in. What do you want the value when no value is provided? Now, these are conditional upon what data type you have set up here. So we have this now function available to us because this is a timestamp. And you can look at this link here to see all the functions you have available to you. So for instance, if we've got a text type, say a first name and we add in text right here you can see that we've got the options of null or an empty string or the text functions you have available to you from Postgres. Next, you have an option to set whether this is the primary key that is the main unique value to identify this row. This is automatically set up with an ID and you can add in another one if you want a composite key, but we're just gonna leave it at its default. Next, you have some extra options, whether you want the value to be nullable, that is it can accept a null value or not, whether you wanna enforce uniqueness and whether the value is an array, so multiple values. Okay, so what do we need here? Well, we've got a first name and let's add in a last name. It's going to be of type text and set that to null. And we're going to add in an email, which is also going to be of type text. And we're almost done because while this structure is good, this users table has no relationship to that authorization users table. That is the table that's used when they sign in. And we of course want these to be connected because for instance, when a user signs in, we want them to be able to see stuff from their account, like their posts. But right now these two tables are unrelated. And the way you relate or link two tables is by a foreign key, which is this link icon right here. 
here? And what column do we want linked? Well, you might think we want this email, but you don't wanna do that because your foreign key has to be a unique value. And if we were to set up the foreign key with an email, now, of course, Superbase wouldn't let us do this, but if it did, you could have two people sign up with the same email. Instead, we're gonna use the ID. So just click on that icon and then select the schema that you want to see the tables. We want the auth and we want the users table. Next, you wanna set what column you want linked to. And we're just gonna use the ID there. Finally, we've got this action option that we wanna set. And what this is saying is that when the parent, so the parent is the thing we're linking to, when that is deleted, what do we want to do with the children? And what we're setting up right now is the child. So if Tom has a row here and that gets deleted, what do we wanna do with Tom's user row here? And we've got a couple options. So do nothing, set it to null, set it back to whatever the default was we set up here, restrict it, which means that the delete operation on the parent table will fail if there are any corresponding rows in the child table. This is useful when you wanna ensure that there are no orphaned rows in the child table. And finally, cascade, which means when the parent is deleted, all of the children references will be deleted as well. And that's what we want. Because if that main authorization user account is deleted, they're probably deleting the whole account because they couldn't sign in anymore. Okay, that's not beautiful. And we can just create those. And there it is. We've got our table set up, ready to receive data. Now, this is just giving us another warning about how our security rules are wide open and we can just dismiss that for now. Okay, so our users table is set up. It's linked to our authorization users table. So now let's just set up our post table. So we're gonna need a new table. It's gonna be our posts. Once again, turn off row level security and we're gonna keep those defaults and we're just gonna need a title, which is gonna be a text and a body of the post, which is also gonna be a text. And then finally, we need to attach this to a user. So once again, we need a foreign key. So we're gonna add this, we're gonna say user and we're gonna attach it to our users table we just created, and we wanna reference that ID. And once again, if that user's record is deleted, what do we wanna do with their posts? Well, we probably wanna delete those too, so we're gonna say cascade, beautiful. And that's set up. Awesome. So we've got both of our tables set up. And the last thing we need to do in Superbase is to come over into our authentication here, go to providers and email, which is the provider that we're using right now, and just turn off confirmation email and secure email change. This just has to do with how the integration with Flutterflow works. So this will auto confirm the accounts. If you want to retain that confirmation workflow where they sign up for account, they get a confirmation email, and then they have to confirm it, you can set up that logic inside Flutterflow. Okay, so just scroll down and save that. And we are all set up here. So let's jump into Flutterflow and set this all up. All right, so I've set up a simple project here just with template pages. And I've got three pages. I've got a sign up page where our user is going to create an account. Then I've got a feed page. It's gonna show the posts. And then I've got a post where you can compose and then post that post. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Well, we need to do three things. First, we need to connect to Supabase. Second, we need to set up authentication. And third, we need to set up the logic. So like when you press this button, it'll send this post to Supabase. And when you press the create account button, it actually creates account in Supabase. Okay, so come over here to your icon and scroll down to integrations, click on Supabase and just enable Supabase. And we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need the URL and the anonymous key. So jump back over to Supabase and come into the gear right here and API, and this first one is the URL, so grab that and put that in. Then you wanna grab this key right here, copy that and paste that in and get schema. Beautiful, and there are our two tables that we set up with this little icon for what our primary key is. We've got our field names, we've got the data types that Flutterflow is treating these as, and then we've got the corresponding Postgres types here. Beautiful, and we come into the posts here and we can see once again, Everything's come in correctly, and we even have this icon for a foreign key. All right, so we're connected to Supabase. First step done, now come over here to authentication, 
click it on in this drop down menu, select super base and specify which is the entry page that is before the user is signed in, where do you want them to go? And then once they're logged in, where do you want them to go? So we want them to sign up and then just for our testing purposes, let's go to the post page. All right, great, two out of steps done in under a minute. Now we just have to set up the logic. So let's start in this sign up page. So come over here to that widget tree and to our sign up page. And let's go to this big fat get started button and come over here to the second tab, which is where you set up your logic in the action flow editor. And let's just add an action and you can search for super base authentication here. We want to create an account, choose our provider. We've only set up email for now, so that's what we want. And then we just have to bind these to the values on the page. So we can come in here and it auto recognizes and we want the email address and we need a password field. So we've got that password and the confirmation and that's this password confirm and if you're wondering where these are coming from they're coming from the actual names of these widgets here so if i were to click in you can edit that up here password confirm beautiful and then you scroll down and this text right here is saying what we already talked about, about having two user tables. So this is going to make a record in that authentication users table. We have to make another action to write in that other table. So let me show you how to do that. So if you have more than one action set up here, you just wanna open this up so you get some more space. Okay, so we wanna add another action and it's going to be super base again, but this time it's not authentication because we're just doing a simple insertion into a row of a table. So we want insert row, select a table. So this is reading from that connection from Superbase and we want users. And then we specify what columns we want set right here. And Flutterflow will automatically recognize these so you don't have to specify them. Okay, that's great. So the first one is ID. And remember, we set this up as a foreign key. So this ID should be the ID from the auth users account that we set up. Okay, so how do we get this? So we come in here to our bind variable and because in the last action we just authenticated our user, we can twirl this open and see we've got that user ID available to us. So that's what we want, beautiful. So we've got this created at time and we can just come in here and use this little utility function we've got in our global properties, the current time, and close that up. First name will be coming from that text field on our page. So it's gonna be coming from a widget. So let's look inside this widget state and we got a first name, beautiful. The last name, same thing from a widget state, our last name, and finally our email. Once again, same thing, email, wonderful. So let's close these up. And then the last thing we wanna do is after we've created these two records, what do we want to do with the user? We don't have to stay on the page, we wanna send them over to that post page. Okay, great. All right, let's test this out, confirm that it's working here, and then see that data come in in Superbase. Okay, come up here and test. All right, beautiful, there we are, and let's create an account. So I'm just gonna create my personal account here. Beautiful, there, we're in. All right, let's jump over to Superbase to see this data come in. So we can come over to our authentication here and look at that, there I am. And then let's go look over in our tables here into our users and beautiful, there I am. And you can see if you double click on this that it's connected correctly. So now we're viewing the record referenced with our foreign key here in our auth users table, wonderful. All right, lastly, let's set up the logic so that our user can post. Okay, so let's go over to this post page and we're gonna go to this post now button and set up that logic. And what are we gonna wanna do when we post? Well, we are going to wanna insert a row in our database. It's gonna be to our posts table. So let's set up these fields here. And the first one is going to be the ID. Now, we actually don't wanna set this ID because this is the primary key in Superbase. And so Superbase handles creating unique values for this ID. So we don't wanna handle it ourselves. Now, if you do wanna handle this in your app, you're more than welcome to set this, but we want Superbase to handle that. Okay, next we've got created at, which is the same thing as before, this nice utility function. And once again, these are just coming from widget states. So we've got our title and we've got our body. Wonderful. And then lastly, we've got our foreign key link to our user, which 
once again is from our authenticated user. Beautiful. And then after they post, what do we want them to do? Well, why don't we send them over to the feed so we can confirm in here that this is actually working. Okay, so that sounds good. So let's need another action here. A uh, quick navigate action. We're going to the feed page. And then we go over to the feed page and we actually have to connect this to Supabase. So we're gonna come into our column right here. We're gonna wanna get a backend call here to Supabase. We want our posts table and let's just show everything for now. This is just telling us that we're gonna generate children from that call, that's wonderful. And now let's just bind the values. So here in our title, we're gonna bind that to our title and to our body, we're gonna bind that to our body. Wonderful. All right, let's test this out. Let's make this post. And post, look at that. Beautiful. So let's jump into back into Supabase and there's our one post. And that's how easy it is to set up Supabase off in Flutterflow. Let us know if you have any questions below or any other videos you want to see us make. And we'll see you in the next video.